10. So that'll be fun. So I hope, uh, happy Father's Day to all of our dads, grandpas. You know, Ray, Ray, he's got his, he's showing off, he's got his grandfather shirt on today. Well, then you, there you go. Um, but hope you have a good Father's Day. I was talking to Chris Robinson, and he said that about 34% of fathers have a happy Father's Day, or but like 90% of mothers have a happy Mother's Day. So I'll just leave that as it will, right? Uh, which is kind of sad. Yes. Yep. No cheating. Well. Uh, Usually we preach really nice Father uh, Mother's Day sermons about how great mothers are, and then on Father's Day we challenge the dads to be better dads, right? And so uh, we get the brunt of it. But hope you have a five. Of, uh, I so hope that you're one of the 33 percent that have a happy Father's Day. Um, and so for this class this summer, what what we're doing is um, we're talking about and interviewing people on their favorite things. Uh, but this morning, we're going to deviate a little bit um, in that um, let's talk about um, the idea of, of I want to hear about your dad uh, and maybe a favorite memory of him. So be thinking about that. And uh, what's one lesson, what's one life lesson that still sticks with you that your father taught you? What, what would that be? And as you think, yeah. Go ahead. Okay. All right. All right. So you're direct. You, you just get in there. Um, but for a few minutes, while you're thinking about that, other than Haley, while you're thinking uh, about that, um, what do you think would be some theological implications of God being called Father. Because that's one of the primary ways that God is addressed, right, in the Bible. Jesus addresses him, our Father who art in heaven, right? So what are the implications of God being called and being our our heavenly Father, what do you think? What why do you think the Bible calls God Father? Yes, yes, ma'am. Okay, a protector and a provider. Okay, um, I think that's certainly a big part of it. Um, what else? Why why else would God be called Father um, in the Bible? Yes, Tracy. Okay, so we all have a part of our Father's DNA, if we knew him or not. Um, and so God wants us to have his DNA in us, right? Okay, good. I haven't thought about that one. That's a good one. Leanne? He's our creator. He's our creator. And so, um, so we owe it our very existence to him, right? So, so that's good. Uh, yes. Go ahead. We among friends. <laughs> he tells you what to do. I mean, I know it's kind of out of vogue now, but we are, I think, to obey God. Obedience is, he's big on that, right? Um, and if you don't, there are consequences, just as if you did not obey, if I did not obey my dad, there was consequences um and i <laughs> my dad was an old-fashioned guy from mississippi so th the the punishment didn't always fit i thought the crime you know what i mean um 
But it did deter me from other things. So maybe that, there was a method to the madness. Mike. Criminals are always. <laughs> <laughs> Ray, did you have a. Uh, Roger, did you have a. My father never leaves the Lord. Okay. Um, that may not be true of everyone. Um, but I think the deepness of our faith is our Heavenly Father never leaves us. Uh, but some of us have had fathers that have abandoned us and abused us. And so for not everyone, the imagery of father is not a positive one, right? But what I think can happen and does happen is that then the that God heals the imagery of father. That God comes al- 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 alongside and says, whatever earthly father you had, um, if it's a good father, right, then that, that just compliments. And, uh, but if you had an abusive father or you were abandoned or whatever that was, God says to come in and I will heal that and I will, I will be that loving father for you and to you. Make sense? Uh, and so I think that's a powerful imagery. Anybody else? Why is God called Father? Rita. Okay. Yeah. I mean, a, a closeness, a relationship. Um, you know, and, and if you ever go to Israel, which I hope you do, and you just walk around and you hear those kids yelling, Abba, right? Uh, Daddy. Um, so that's always... It's always cool to hear. Yes, Kevin. Okay. All right. Um, You know, like the song a few years ago with Chris Tomlin, uh, you're a good, good father, right? Uh, And I love that song. Um, Anybody else? The theological implications of God being father. Yes, Willie. the image of God. Okay. So he, he now Jesus came in this world and become a person and crucified himself for us. So he went back to God. So we that's why we call God is our our father. Okay. Not everybody because uh, everybody go in their way. And that's why we feel special, special people. Okay. And I also think that that's a uh, good point, Willie. I, I do also think that in the context when the Bible was written, right, um, that you didn't have a relationship with the gods, with the idols, with... Um, and so, and you obeyed the king. You owe, I mean, you were oppressed by the king. You, ha- I mean, you, but then God comes alongside and changes that whole dynamic and says, uh, I'm your father. I'm your creator. I'm, you're made in my image. Uh, I care for you. Um, I'm a loving father who's kind and compassionate and gracious. Um, and so it, it, it builds in us this need for, I think we all need a loving, kind, uh, father, I think we all need that. Um, you know, if you if you look at, I just heard even a stat with um, you've heard the stats with with guys and um, men in that are incarcerated that over ninety percent of them did not have a father figure uh, in their life. Uh, I just heard recently that these active shooters that. The same stats almost true that 90% of the active shooters do not have an active father figure uh, in their lives. So do you think that's by accident? Do you think, I mean, fathers are important. Fathers are a key to a healthy society, just as mothers are. God built that in us. 
right? Moms and dads. Um, so any other reason we're talking about the theological implications of God being called Father? Anybody else? These are all g- great insights, good ideas, helpful to me to understand God. Um, now also, for equal time, maybe next Mother's Day, uh, God is also called mother. There's a mothering side to God uh, in the Bible. Um, and so, you know, as Jesus says, as he says, as a him would gather her chicks, I would gather you um, as a mother. And even in the Psalms, there's some implications of God being being mother or, or the mothery, that loving image. All right. Anybody else? Any theological insights into God being called Father? Yes. is raised or focuses more on the mother they don't learn how to deal with things themselves they don't learn how to um, handle life without that kind of comforting support fathers teach us to lead teach us to be strong teach us to stand on our own and we we can't have one without the other but the father role that God plays is not just I'm going to take care of you for forever. You have to learn to stand. You have to learn to have a support. You have to learn how to be a protector. And that's, that's the father's role in a family is the, the mother tends to be more support, more comfort. And the father's more stand up and be strong and learn how to do things to to carry on the family. Okay. All right. Good. Um, yeah. I was going to make some comments, but I, I'll just let that stand. Here, that's, that's good. Um, the, the, so to keep in with that theme of our class, we did this for a few minutes. Uh, you may want to share uh, a favorite memory uh, of your dad. You might have a favorite memory um, of your dad, and we want to want to share that. You might have a favorite memory. What c- what comes to mind when when you think of your dad? Well, every day when my father came home from work, it wasn't just me and my sister at the at the truck when he got home. It was the whole neighborhood, all of our girlfriends carrying in his lunchbox and all of his helmets, everything. He was construction. Okay. Heavy construction. And uh, it wasn't just me and my sister. It was the whole neighborhood. He okay. was like the neighborhood father. Wow. Yeah. That's cool. That's a good imagery. Uh, I'm in the wrong neighborhood. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, good, good, good memory. Anybody else? What's a favorite memory of your dad? Anna, what's a favorite? And uh, one time we were out sailing and something broke on the boat. And it's a small sailboat. And uh, so we started spinning because uh, whatever it was that broke led us to not be able to steer anymore. So we're just out in the middle of the ocean, circling around. People are watching us. And we (laughs) had to work together. And we were just laughing. And uh, it went on for quite a while. And we worked together. And he taught me how to fix it. And we just sat there afterwards. And we were just laughing so much. And then we go up to the dock. And we run into the dock. And my dad just goes, we're here. <laughs> and we that's what we say now all the time. So he just always makes the best of all the situations. Okay, and cool. And keeps me calm. Good story. So, so how, how old were you when that happened? Oh, uh, 20, probably. Okay, okay. Yeah. All right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, last week. That, that was. Some of you that are new to Cross Tower, when you make a comment and Leslie comes by with the mic, that's for the people online that are watching uh, so they can hear the comments um, uh, that you make. Anybody else? A favorite memory uh, of your dad? What would that be? What's a favorite memory of your dad? When I was in college, um, all of my friends commented 
that I got letters from my dad. They got letters from their mom. I got letters from mom. Mom's letters always ended love mom and dad. I got letters from dad. It ended love dad. Ah, there you go. <laughs> you didn't. You didn't include mom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but good. Yes, they, good. They just were in awe that I got so many letters from my dad Kay. because they didn't. Good, good. And I, I what what Tracy said. My dad wanted our house to be the the hangout of the other kids. So we had a pool table, ping pong table. We lived on five acres. We had a fishing pond. We had so. So all my kids, I mean, all my friends hung out at my house, which, you know, there's a point in you know, time, though, you would go hang out at somebody else's house, right, to get away from your parents. And oh, let's go to your house. Your dad's so cool. He's funny. You know, let's go. No, I'm going to go somebody else. I'm going to go somewhere else. Uh, but my dad wanted the kids at his house. And there's a method to that madness, right? I mean, he wanted to keep an eye on his kids. Um, and so still to this day, a lot of my friends will say, I remember going to your house and playing pool and, you know, hanging out and. And uh, so that's always that's a good that's a good memory, Mike. Um, I I have a lot of memories of my dad, but uh, I wanted to share a memory of Linda's dad. Okay. Uh, he he just passed away last year at age ninety one, and he had been a uh, um, athlete in in several sports, um, sort of sort of one of those natural athletes, and and he he uh, moved from upstate New York. Uh, almost at the Canadian border to uh, uh, Maryville, Missouri, uh, on scholarship, and he, um, um, you know, raised raised four girls and on a, uh, a high school principal salary and a coach's salary and a and and so he was also an avid hunter because that was how you fed that mob, and so uh, he he loved to hunt and fish and. And I, um, I, I guess I knew him as sort of, I mean, my, my fishing was always in farm ponds for bullheads. You know, that was about right. the extent of it. Well, he, he really knew how to fish. And so, uh, so I, would, I would go, uh, after I married Linda, we, we would go to Canada fishing to Gull Rock Lake, Ontario, near Red Lake. And it was 1,000 miles from Independence, Missouri, straight north through uh, International Falls to, to this fishing camp. The very first year, the, uh, the Country Squire, Ford Country Squire LTD died. We, we blew an engine in the, in the middle of the night near Moose Lake, Minnesota. And so I, I thought, well, is this how these trips go? Because he had been making the trips for years. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and suddenly the the Ford died, so we uh, we ended up uh, getting a new Ford at this little tiny town. Uh, it turned out later it didn't have a second gear, but that was a warranty issue. But uh, the way he handled himself um, in that situation, you know, it was it was immediately you know Mike grabbed the flashlight because we didn't have cell phones at that point. This was back in the in the seventies. Uh, he said, Mike, grab the flashlight, run back down the highway and signal to the to the next car with uh, the other fishermen in it. And, uh, you know, we all we just all sort of buckled down for the evening and slept in the car and waited for the waited for the garage to open the next morning and and uh, dealt with the situation at hand. Nobody got flustered. And, and he was just a, a good example of a leader. Good. Very good. Uh, yeah, my dad was, like I said, from, from he's an old guy from Mississippi. And so I remember one time we went camping, and his idea was camping was getting a sleeping bag, sleeping on the ground, and, you know, even to have a tent. He called the sissies for wanting a tent. Um, and so I remember one time we were, uh, me and my two brothers, we were camping with him and this, uh, some other people, and we were uh, running trot lines. Anybody know what a, what a trot line is? You, you run a trot line. Uh, string and all these hooks, and then you go and you go check them every few hours. And so we had caught this um, huge gar. You know what a gar is? I think it's huge. My dad said, "Let's let, let's take that back to camp." Yeah. So we brought it back back to camp. So my dad said this. He said, "I'm gonna give you boys 30 minutes. 
uh, you can't use a gun because we always took a pistol with us. Um, and he said, I, I, I bet you boys can't kill that gar. I'll give you 30 minutes. Well, you challenge three teen boys to something like that, I mean, it's on. Well, my dad got his little lawn chair, and he sat down, and he's going to enjoy the show. And 30 minutes, we beat that thing with a bat with against the tree, against the thing, and my dad would go, no, he's still breathing. And we did, I mean, he's not either. And we, well, it's turned sure, sure enough, he's like, you know, beat that thing against that tree. My dad was sitting there just laughing, just, I mean, just having a great time. And we did everything to that guard. And that sucker was still breathing after 30 minutes. And so my dad goes over and says, I'll take care of that, and, hit, and just shoots it with the 45. We said, you told us that we couldn't use the 45. He goes, well, son, I'm your dad, and I, and I can. So um, <laughs> he said, I'm, I'm going to put this fish out of its misery. <laughs> and um, so that's, that's how my dad had fun. Um, so then we went back, that's why, I don't know, we, he did that all the time. But that was one of my favorite um, memories, and, and uh, but we could not kill that gar uh, to save our lives. So anybody else? Switching sides because we've we got about 10 minutes. And then we, we, uh, this did we see a hand? Ray, this is going to be good. Ray? <laughs> My dad was 5'9", uh, and uh, he would sit in his lounger, and uh, it was a little corridor between his right arm and his the coal, uh, the used to be a coal stove, but it became an oil stove. So we, and on the other side was a couch, and so you couldn't get by on that side. He loved to watch, uh, if anybody remembers this, roller derby. Oh, yeah. And roller derby, absolutely. And, uh, and uh, he loved to watch fighting. So he, his uh, rocker had an arm on it, and he would try to tear the arm off as he watched the the uh, fighting, <laughs> but my sister and I, uh, when he got in these moods after watching all that, we would have to dart through because the bathroom was around the corner of, on the right hand side, and he would catch us and grab us by the leg, and for a small man, he had a, like a vice grip, <laughs> and he'd drag us in his lap and just hold us there and make us laugh. It's, it's a bad <laughs> That's good. Anybody else? Jeff. So again, it's di difficult to think. I, I guess I don't do favorites. There's so many. It's kind of like you know. It's kind of like what's a good one? You yeah, know? yeah. So as we were growing up, my dad, we, we used to always play uh, uh, baseball, and my dad encouraged us when we were kids. We had a little league baseball, me and my brother. And, and my dad would always, you know, when he could, he'd come and watch us, watch our games, definitely. So he really encouraged us to do that. But he was also, uh, uh, he wanted to be involved, but he, he worked a lot. So every once in a while, the, um, the, uh, up, the up, um, umpire couldn't make it. And one day, the umpire couldn't make it. And so my dad, you know, we were looking for an ump, you know, one of the, one of the uh, parents out there. So my dad, yeah, I've, so he came and. Well, he kind of tried to make a little bit more of a funny thing of all of this, and we had a, we had a dog that was uh, it was an Australian Shepherd, and uh, it would always come, you know, he, he just one of these things. He would hop in the truck, and he was the back of the truck. And when he got out, he jumped out of the truck wherever we were. So he was he was umping, and and you know, a couple guys had gone. Then he said, "Hold it, hold it," and he and he went to you know, no, normally the umps have this little brush that they brush and clean off the plate. Well, he didn't have that, so he he told our dog, "It was it to come on over here." And, you know, those dogs have a nice nice big brush brushy tail. And he grabbed their tail. He grabbed his tail, turned them around, and, and cleaned off. And you know, everyone just thought it was just you know the most hilarious thing there was to for him to use the dog to clean off the plate and then <laughs> play ball. So you know, I just remember that being out in the field going, <laughs> what, "What? What do you? That's my dad." You know, trying to be funny. But anyway, it was, a, it was a neat little story. That's funny. Anybody else? Marcus. Um, I remember my dad. So my dad's like, <coughs> he's like giant of a man when I was, you know, younger. He's still pretty big, but um, when I was young, he played, he was very athletic, played college football, and just, just huge, man. This, this dude had no sense of what finesse meant, but when he put, did something, it was, boom, it was like aggressive, you know, and so 
I remember one day, um, we, me and my brothers, we were wrestling him. Like we would go, all, we would go hard. Like he, w- like he would pin us to the ground, put the pressure on our chest. Like oh my god, like you, you just felt his strength. And we went to the store after that, <laughs> and we lived in Arizona at the time, and it was the probably one of the bar- bad parts of Arizona. And I remember um, this 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 homeless guy came up to us, and he was like, "Hey man, uh, you got like." couple dollars for me and my dad's like nope we broke let's go kids and my dad he was like hey man the homeless guy's like hey man you gonna give me that money and my dad was like i looked at my dad I was like oh somebody gonna get knocked out <laughs> and i looked at the homeless dude i looked at my dad my dad looked at the kid <laughs> looked at us he was like step back kid he was like you put your hands on me on my kids you will not wake up the next day and that dude had the fear of God in him, right? Because my d- it was like with my dad, and I got this straight too. Like if we, you know, we get in that certain situation, his chest got hit, and he's a big guy. His chest, shoulders, like I was like, oh my gosh, he's gonna jump out, he's gonna kill this guy. And so the guy like backed off. So every every since then, I got that memory of my dad in my in my head, like I'm not messing with you. <laughs> okay. Let's not end on a knockout story. Anybody else got a story <laughs> that, that that we can we can we can end on a, on a more Christian note? No, no. Yes, sir. Hey, I'm JD. I'm here visiting today. Thank I'll you, tell man. you one about my dad. Okay. Uh, he was in Vietnam. When he got out, he went to work for Bell Helicopter because of it, what he did in the military. He got a good job at Bell Helicopter in Texas and Fort Worth. Sure. And when I was five, he came home one day and said, "I'm going into the ministry." Well, one of his ministry stories that just always stuck in my mind were Dallas Cowboy fans. Everybody called him the Texas Preacher Man. He went into one of the local restaurants one day, a little cafe, and everybody's, hey, Texas Preacher Man, hey, Texas Preacher Man, how's it going? Everybody knew him by that. Everybody knew Dad, knew Bob. Good. Well, there was a man in there that was coming through town, and he came up to Dad. Dad had gotten him a Suburban and painted it Dallas Cowboy blue and silver. Just got this wild idea to do that. Well, this man came up and said, hey, um, I'm a promoter for the Dallas Cowboy cheerleaders, and I've been looking for someone to drive about eight of our cheerleaders around for some promotions, and I would like for you to do that because if you're the Texas preacher man, I know you're going to be good and nice and not be ugly or do anything to these girls, and I love your Suburban. Would you do that? And he said yes. And my mom never let him, let, just never let that down, <laughs> never let that go. So, so did he do it? I mean, did he, he did it. <laughs> I don't the have Texas any preacher on that. man <laughs> driving the Dallas Cowboy cheerleaders around for some of their promotions. <laughs> I got a. Yeah, <laughs> I got a lot of thoughts, and I can't share one of them. So anyway, so uh, 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 it is time for dads and donuts, and so um, go to the four year, take take a picture um, with adopted dad, with adopted grandfather, or whoever you want to take a picture with, and have some donuts. And well, let's have a word of prayer before we do. Father, thank you for this morning. Father, I thank you that you're our father, and that you re-image for a lot of us. Uh, what a loving father is. But Father, thank you for our earthly fathers. I pray that we we all have good memories uh, of our dads and what they taught us and good memories. And and Father, if we don't, then, then we can be that father um, to our kids and, and be that. Because Father, we do get our kids formulate their ideas about you from their dads. And so Father, we know how important dads are um, in the in the family and to the society at large. And so, Father, help us to be better dads. Help us to be better sons. Help us to be better neighbors, to be better leaders, to be better husbands, to be the spiritual leader of our homes. So, Father, uh, thank you this morning in these good stories. And, Father, and to be with us in our time now of, of fellowship. And, Father, to be with us in time of assembly. Uh, that we have a connection with you and a connection with each other and a time just to be family to, uh, today. Father, thank you for, for Jen Cassidy and for Hannah uh, fixing these these um, these props and 
and these pictures, Father, that our kids can look back on today and think that was a good day when I, in, the, in this picture of, of me and my dad. So, Father, thank you for, for every Sunday's Father's Day. And we honor you and we worship you. Father, we ask all these things through your son's name and the class.